I'm afraid of Rola. I'm an expert in decision making. But today I want to talk to you about COVID-19, the devil is in the details. You've heard people saying that uh, uh, this disease is called coronavirus. Of course, that's interesting and we believe it. You have people saying that, um, uh, people saying a campaign by saying that somebody can be able to have this virus which means testing positive but, what, but not showing symptoms. The other thing we've heard was that uh, experts saying that you can be able to test for coronavirus or even test COVID-19. Again, that has we have taken that as true. You also had guys saying that we have 320 cases, confirmed cases, uh, recovered cases, and death cases. Those are things we've had. But let me tell you what, there are so many things that these things you've had here cannot give information. Let's start, for example, the issue of this disease being called coronavirus. Do you know that there are so many coronaviruses that just calling this disease coronavirus is so misleading. That's why some people insist on calling it COVID-19. Because of the fact that we have alpha, a group alpha of coronavirus. We have a group called uh, beta of coronaviruses. Also, we have a group which is called delta. So there are so many deltas of coronas. There are so many alphas of coronas. There are so many betas of coronavirus. So if you say coronavirus, when our kids will be learning about this some years from now, they can be misled. Which am I talking about? So I would like to say that it's, it's like stretching too much. But why don't we just call these things with the right name? All scientists publishing papers, newspaper articles, TV, information, name it, all media, all sorts of media should just call these things COVID-19 but not coronavirus because that will mislead. Because the devil is in the details how we call these things. The second thing is that, as I told you, that this disease has been told that you can be able to test positive without showing symptoms. Now, there is a difference between symptoms and signs. Because symptoms are what a patient complains about. But signs are what can be tested. So now, uh, you, 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 you talk about temperature. Somebody may not know their temperature is high or low. But only by measuring the temperature that we can call it now a sign, because a sign is measurable, which can be done by a, a third party. So what I'm trying to say here in short is that we need to be very clear about stating that actually you can be able to test positive, but your signs and symptoms cannot exhibit the signs and symptoms we are being told like high temperature, uh, dry cough, and shortness of breath. The other thing which I said that, okay, experts say we can test for coronavirus. Now Kenya is saying they're doing mass testing. What are they testing? Are they doing what they call diagnostic tests? Are they doing antigen tests? Or are they doing antibody tests? So which kind of tests are we doing? So people can say we are testing for this and that. What are you testing for? So I'm sure that this looks like I'm nagging, but I'm trying to say that it's very fast to be very specific. The third thing, like I said, people say, oh, conf uh, confirmed cases. Confirmed cases by who? Deaths by who? So many people are dying, and some of them, we don't know what has actually killed them. Like now in the US, in Europe, people are saying some have died without us knowing actually what killed them. So I'm trying to say, if we are very specific, is it a hospital death? Is it a nursing home death? Is it a homestead death? Or is it kind of death, because sometimes you can have COVID, then you're hit by a car. So who, what has killed you? Is it COVID or the car? But are you a case of COVID or you're a case of a car? So it's, 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 it's nagging. But let me tell you why this thing is important. Uh, we go back to history. When we had the First World War, it was not called the First World War, because people didn't know that there would be another war. So we have World War, then we have World War Two. Had guys known there will be Second World War, they could have called this World War I, then they call this World War II. The other thing is, as I told you, is about, we hear this thing about post-election violence. Uh, we've had so many violence after elections, but how comes only 2007-2008 remembered as post-election violence? 
it is misleading to people who read history. It looks like Kenya has only had one post-election violence, but we had so many post-election violence. And we need to know that which one was this. So post-election violence one, post-election violence two, post-election violence three. And in Kenya, I can tell you, through all elections we have, there have been violence. So we should actually start from the first election we had until now, counting how many post-election violence we've had. And of course, we've had a whole handshake. Uhuru Kenyatta had a handshake with Raila. That's the only handshake I remember. But you know that there was a handshake between Raila and Kibaki. Or, uh, Raila and Kibaki. And so we should, we should say handshake one, handshake two. What I'm trying to say here is that we need to be very specific about things, distinct about things, meticulous about things, passion for clarity will really improve how we write, how we think, and how we state things. Because it may mislead people who are very vulnerable, because somebody can go on social media or on Google and Google, uh, signs for coronavirus, and they can be Googling beta, alpha, or delta. But maybe they can assume that is what information they required to know about COVID-19, but that can be misleading. That's why it's important for us to be very specific and ensure that the devils are in the details, so we should communicate the details with exactitude. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and have a nice ride.